Good morning. You are welcome to prayer, fasting, and healing service. You are watching us or listening to us. We are from Christ Chapel Church, located behind Faculty of Public Health, University Teaching Hospital, Ibadan. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for today. We thank you, Lord, that this gathering is unto you. For when we gathered in your presence, it is a most blessed and holy moment. Thank you, Lord, that you are here present with myriads of your angels. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for in your presence today, we will be healed, renewed, restored, and delivered. Lord God Almighty, let those who will hear the sound of your words today, let this world do them good. Let today, O oh God, be a remarkable time in your presence, that all the glory will be given to you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. We shall be taking our first hymn titled, Who is on the Lord's Side? As you listen or sing along, let the lyrics of these words bless and encourage you. In Jesus' name. Amen.
Praise the Lord. We shall be taking our Bible reading for today from the book of Genesis chapter 39 from verse 1 to 12. Then the second passage is taken from Matthew chapter 14, 22 to 33. Read, meditate, and may God bless his word into our hearts. Genesis 39, reading from verse 1 to verse 12. Now Joseph had been taken to Egypt, an Egyptian named Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh and a certain of a guide bought him from the Ishmaelites who had brought him there. The Lord was with Joseph and he became a successful man, serving in the household of his Egyptian master. When his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made everything he did successful, Joseph found favor in his master's sight and became his personal attendant. Potiphar also put him in charge of his household and placed all that he owned under his authority. From the time that he put him in charge of his household and of all that he owned, the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house because of Joseph. The Lord's blessing was on all that he owned in his house and in his fields, he left all that he owned under Joseph's authority. He did not concern himself with anything except the food he ate. Now Joseph was well built and handsome, verse 7. After some time, his master's wife looked longingly at Joseph and said, Sleep with me, verse 8. But he refused. Look. He said to his master's wife, With me here, my master does not concern himself with anything in this house, and he has put all that he owns under my authority. No one in this house is greater than I am. He has withheld nothing from me except you, because you are his wife. So how could I do such a great evil and sin against God? Verse 10, although she spoke to Joseph day after day, he refused to go to bed with her. Now, one day, he went into the house to do his work, and none of the household servants were there. Verse 12, she grabbed him by his garment and said, sleep with me. But leaving his garment in her hand, he escaped and ran away. Matthew chapter 14, 22 to 33. Immediately, he made the disciples get into the boat and go ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After dismissing the crowds, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone, but the boat was already over a mile from the land, battered by the waves because the wind was against them. Around three in the morning, he came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and cried out in fear. Immediately, Jesus spoke to them. Have courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it is you, Peter answered him, command me to come to you on the water. Come, he said. And climbing out of the boat, Peter started walking on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the strength of the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Verse 31. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand, caught, him, caught hold of him, and said to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Verse 33. Then those in the boat worshipped him and said, Truly, you are the Son of God. May these words renew and restore our faith in, in God 
In Jesus' name, amen. Next, we shall be taking the children program. Hello, children. I know you have been eager for this section of this program. We shall be inviting our sister, Sister Hazan, to take us through this segment of the program. God bless you. Praise ye the Lord. Good morning, church. Good morning, children. Children of the Bible, are you there? Praise the Lord. In a moment, we shall be watching a video clip taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 14, from verse 22 to 33. It is a story of where Jesus walked on the sea and commanded Peter to walk on the sea with him. God bless you as you watch. After the great feeding of the 5,000, Jesus told his disciples to get into a boat and cross the lake called the Sea of Galilee. I'll meet you later, Jesus told them. It was time for Jesus to spend some time in prayer. As his disciples took the boat across the lake, Jesus went to a place where he could pray. Even though it was late at night, Jesus knew that prayer and time with God, his Father, was important. While Jesus prayed, a violent storm arose. The wind was fierce on the lake, and the disciples, rowing with all their might, weren't getting anywhere. Even though they had been on the lake for hours, they were unable to steer the boat and became frightened. At that moment, Jesus decided to come to the disciples. Since he did not have a boat, he simply started walking on the water towards them. In the middle of that terrible storm, Jesus walked calmly as the crushing waves roared from all sides. As the lightning flashed and the rain pelted them, the disciples looked around in confusion, wondering what to do. And then they saw something on the water. Could it be someone walking on the water? It's a ghost, they screamed in terror. Every one of the disciples in the boat was terrified. Take heart, it's me, Jesus replied cheerfully. Don't be afraid. He walked confidently toward the trembling disciples who were huddling in the wind-swept, wave-beaten boat. Then Peter answered, If it's you, command me to come to you on the water. Peter knew that Jesus had control over all the elements, even the weather. Come, Jesus replied. So Peter began to climb out of the boat and stepped into the water. He was doing it. He was walking on the water. He could hardly believe what was happening. But then Peter shifted his attention away from Jesus and onto the storm. He felt the sting of the strong wind. He looked at the motion of the wild waves. And then he plunged down into the water. Lord, save me, Peter yelled. Quickly, Jesus grabbed Peter and pulled him back, helping him into the boat. Jesus looked at his disciples. Why do you have so little faith? Why do you doubt so easily? Jesus asked. Then Jesus stepped into the boat himself, and right away, the night became calm. The air went still, not even a hint of the terrible wind and storm they had experienced. The disciples in the boat were astonished. Their terror was gone, and they started worshiping Jesus. Truly, you are the Son of God, they whispered in adoration. Praise the Lord. Children, you are welcome back. I'm sure you enjoyed the video clip you've just watched. I want to take you through some lessons learned from the video clip. Six quick lessons. Number one. When the video started, you saw someone else praying. That was Jesus. If Jesus, our Lord and Savior, can pray, then it's a good example for us that we need to pray. And most especially you children, don't be satisfied with the family altar. I know you pray with your parents in the morning and evening. As children of the Bible, you should set a such time while you talk to God on your own. Jesus prayed. In that video clip, 
And we as children of God, we must also be prayerful. The second lesson, there will be storms in our journey of life. There will always be storms. What do we call storms? Children, what do you understand by storm? Storm is anything that takes away our peace. Storm is anything that brings us trouble, be it failure, be it sickness. Even COVID-19 is a storm because you are locked down. You cannot go to school. You cannot come to church. You cannot visit your friends. So what do we do when storm comes? What we should do in the time of storm is that we should call on the name of the Lord, as we saw the disciples. The third lesson, when we call upon the name of the Lord, what will happen? What will happen is that Jesus will show up in times of trouble. We saw in the video clip when Jesus walked on the sea, when his disciples were in trouble. He walked on the sea to save his disciples. Jesus will show up for you children. He will help you. Whenever you need him, what you have to do is to call on him. The fourth lesson, do not fear. Why did the, the, the disciples fear? They were fearful of the storm. And they were fearful of an image they saw walking on the sea that they thought it was a ghost. Peter also feared. And at the point when he feared, he started to sink. Children, Jesus is telling you, do not fear. I'm there for you. Lesson number five. We as children, we should dare to challenge God. Peter challenged God because he has faith. He said, Jesus, if it's you, command me to come and meet you on water. And Jesus said, come. We should appreciate the faith of Peter because as soon as Jesus said, come, he stepped out of the boat, not onto a dry land, but into the sea. He stood on the sea and he walked on the sea. Praise the Lord. The last lesson, don't take your eyes away from Jesus so that you don't see him. Children, can you hear that? At no time should you take your eyes away from Jesus so that you don't see him. Peter started sinking because he took away his eyes from Jesus. He asked Jesus for help and Jesus helped him. Children of the Bible, in times of trouble, call upon Jesus he will answer you and he will help you. Praise the Lord. The memory verse for today is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verse 27, the second part of verse 27, which says, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. I repeat, a memory verse is taken from the book of Matthew, chapter 14, verse 27b, which says, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. Praise ye the Lord. Children, I'm reminding you of our Zoom meeting coming up on Thursday between the hour of 6 to 7 p.m. God bless you. Remain blessed. Praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. I want you to shout this hallelujah wherever you are hearing the sound of this voice. Let your neighbor hear this sound that you are praising the King of King Most High. Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. We shall be taking a special song, a special hymn. It is titled, Save in the Arms of the Lord. Listen and be blessed.
the Lord. The Lord is good. God has a special word for you today. And you don't want to be distracted. You don't want to fall asleep. Whatever it will take for you to stay alert, to hear and receive this special package from God, just see it as you are expecting a special package. And you don't want to miss the moment of the delivering of that package. So listen as I invite our sister, Dr. Mrs. Moji Ajayi, to deliver this message from God. Be blessed. Shall we pray? It's an rock of ages, the ancient of days. The Lord God Almighty, we thank you for the opportunity to hear from you today. Thank you for your word that you have prepared for us. Thank you, Almighty Father, for your Holy Spirit that will expand your word in our hearts. Blessed be your name, O God, in Jesus' name. Lord Itana, I put myself in the hollow of your hands. Father, as I speak today, let the Holy Spirit speak through me in the name of Jesus. As your word will come out, let it come out with power. Let there be deliverance. Let there be healing. Let there be restoration. Let there be lifting up of your children to the glory and honor of your holy name. Let sinners come unto you. Let them come and bow their knees before you. Fear before you. And receive the Lord Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name we prayed. Praise the Lord. So we thank God for the opportunity to share the word of God today. We thank the Church of God. We thank the leadership of Christ Chapel for giving the Women's Forum the opportunity to anchor today's service. We pray that everyone will be blessed in the name of Jesus. Today, by God's grace, we are considering the title, Fear Not, But Fear God. Fear Not, But Fear Fear God. I will read from Luke chapter 12, verses 4 to 7. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. And after that, have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him, which after he have killed, hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. And not five sparrows sold for two farthings, and not one of them is forgotten before God. 
but even the very hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not, therefore, ye are of more value than many sparrows. Praise the Lord. The title will be considered once again is Fear Not, But Fear God. Fear not, but fear God. This phrase appears several times in the Bible. Fear not, do not be afraid, dread not. In fact, some people even said it appeared like 365 times. And some have argued it. No, it's not up to 365. But no matter how many numbers, even if it's just once, because God commanded it, it's a command from God, then it must be obeyed. Fear not. Now, fear. Fear is actually a universal emotion. It affects children of any age. It can affect adults. It can affect anybody, irrespective of status or position. Fear can affect both male and female. And actually, fear is a natural response to distress or danger. And there are many things that can cause fear anyway. There is fear of sickness, fear of diseases, fear of failure, fear of the future, and of course, fear of death, fear of the judgment, and some people even have phobia for the little, little things. Fear of darkness. At times you send the children to go and take something from the room, and because there's no light there, they are afraid. Fear of the height, several fears. Fears Fear, fear. And if you look at the book of Hebrews, chapter 2, from verses 14 to 15, say, For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil, and deliver them who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage, fear of death. Why do people face diseases? Chronic diseases? It's because this, some of these diseases can end up in death. So this fear is there. King James Dictionary says fear is actually a painful emotion excited by an expectation of evil or an apprehension of impending danger. And in the Bible, the word translated fear can mean three things. Number one, it can mean the terror that we feel when we are frightened. The terror. It can also mean that kind of honor or respect that a servant just like Joshua told the children of Israel in Joshua chapter 24, verse 14. says, Now therefore, fear ye the Lord and serve him faithfully and serve him truly. And the third one, this word, Jirat, that has been translated fear, can also mean the reverence that one feels in the presence of the greater one. Look at the life. Isaiah, when he saw the glory of God, what did he say? He said, who is me? I am undone because I am a man of unclean lips and I live among the people of unclean lips. That is the kind of fear, the reverence. And if you look at the Bible, the very first record of fear was found in the book of Genesis chapter 3 verse 10. And what brought this fear? Sin. When Adam said, oh, I heard your voice. I hid myself because I was afraid. Sin brought this fear. If you look at the book of Matthew that we read, and that her sister took to show a video clip for the children. The Lord Jesus Christ, after that miracle of feeding 5,000 men, he constrained his disciples. He said, go to the other side. You know, when you look at that word constrained, he compelled them. It was as if the disciples didn't want to go. It was as if 
We heard what they were going to say with Moses. When he said, accept your presence, go with us, we will not go. But Jesus compelled them. Jesus constrained them. Go to the other side. Something is waiting on the other side. So, after I did this, then the disciples left and they had to cross to the other side. They want the sea. Jesus went to a solitary place in secret prayers. A sister has given up secret prayers. It is not just for children, even adults, alone with the Lord. Solitary place, communicating and praying unto God. Then, because nobody is immune, as long as we are human beings, nobody is immune to difficulties or storms. Halfway, in the midst of the sea, the disciples started experiencing a storm. The Bible said the wind was contrary to them. Whatever wind is contrary to us, because we serve the living God, the Lord that has power over all natures, that wind will be calmed in the name of Jesus. Even the present wind that is contrary to the whole universe, the wind of COVID-19, that storm will be calmed in the name of Jesus. As I said, Christians are not immune. Jesus Christ told his disciples in John chapter 16, verse 33, he said, these things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. Only in Christ can we have the peace. So, Jesus Christ saw the agony of the, of the disciples. He came to them. We expect the Lord Jesus Christ to be there with us. Why we were in any difficulty or any situation. He's a caring father. He's a loving father. He came to them walking on the sea. And when they saw him, what did they hold? The faith, he was a ghost. I said, Lord, behold. Lord, behold. It is a spirit. They afraid. They cried out for fear. Fear gripped them. As I said, it is a natural response. But we will see what. So some they said, oh, this is a ghost. What did Jesus say? Say, be of good cheer. It is I. That's what happens at times. The misunderstanding of person of Jesus Christ can cause the perplexing and the disquieting fear. The misunderstanding of who God is, as if it's one headmaster carrying a big cane to cane us. No. The Lord, anytime I read Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30, it says, Jesus Christ said, Look, I am. It says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Jesus is meek. And lowly in heart. He says, For my yoke is easy and my body is light. It is I. Be not afraid. They recognize the voice of the Lord Jesus. They recognize this voice. So, do we recognize our vo the voice of our Savior when we pass through difficulties of this life? Or we allow such difficulties? Allow the storm, allow the wind, allow the waves, allow all the troubles. To overwhelm us. To be that we will not recognize his voice. Please, no matter how noisy, no matter how threatening or frightening the storm may be, let us learn to recognize his voice. Fear not. And you could see Peter's courage, the faith. So if you had truly, bid me come. And immediately Jesus said, graciously said, come. And he came. Oh, the Lord Jesus raised Peter from the level of the natural to the supernatural. Peter himself started walking on the sea. What a brilliant and a never to be forgotten experience. Peter started walking. And as long as he looked unto Jesus, as we have heard, he was not sinking. 
But when he looked around again, this happens to us. We will pray. After we have prayed, we will throw the church. But as we start looking at all oh, this problem, but the complications from this, but the trouble from our faith will go down. Then we start sinking. But don't forget, all that is everlasting harm, we cannot sink. No matter how boisterous, no matter how terrible the wind may be, let us not doubt. Let us continue to have strong faith, even as Abraham had. The Bible says Abraham did not look at the weakness of his own body. He did not look at the deadness of the womb of Sarah. He had a strong faith and he continued. This God is a father. So, Peter cried. And when he cried, of course, he was saying, Lord, save me. And he was saved. And Jesus rebuked him, O ye of little faith. I pray that today. Even as the disciples prayed in those days, Lord, increase our faith. It is time to say, Lord, increase my faith. How do we overcome? Why should you fear? Why should we fear when we have the great I am that I am? Lord that never sleeps nor slumbers. Why should we fear? The Lord, even the hell he controls. Satan himself will take permission. That was what happened in the life of Job. He had to take permission from the Lord God Almighty before he could touch Job. How do we overcome fear? The Bible says, perfect love. That's number one. Perfect love casts out fear. That is 1 John chapter 4, verse 18. Perfect love. When I tell myself, Father, I thank you because you love me. I know your love is perfect. I know your love is true. I know your love is it, it, you have loved it. Your love is divine. You have loved me with an everlasting love. Please, it is something we should repeat to ourselves all the time. Let it settle in our heart. God, you love me. God, you love me. Satan will say something otherwise. But let's not listen to the voice of the, of the enemy. Number two, you must keep our mind on him. Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3. He says, he will keep in perfect peace. He will keep in perfect peace whose mind stays on him because he rests, he trusts on him. This was one of the things that the Lord gave unto me. He says, he will keep in perfect peace. When this issue of COVID-19 first started, of course there was fear everywhere, but I, will, I kept on saying, this is your word. You will keep in perfect peace. You will keep in perfect peace. Say because he trusts in you. Then, of course, the next thing that will make us to overcome this is the absolute and total trust in God. Absolute and total trust in God will help us to overcome the fear. You can see from the book of Isaiah chapter 12. Let me quickly read that. I like that. Isaiah chapter 12, verses 2 and 3. It says, Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. He also is become my salvation. Therefore, with joy, shall ye draw water out of the world of salvation. Somebody said one day that two friends met... And one of them said, oh, I found out a golden treasure today. And he says, tell me the golden treasure. I said, the golden treasure is when I am afraid, I will trust in him. Then the friend said, ah, I think I have a diamond treasure. He said, I will trust in him and I will not be afraid. Both verses are found in the Bible. I Psalm 56, verse 3, verse 11. We must trust in the Lord, then we will not be afraid. Praise the Lord. The next thing is the knowledge of God. That will help us to overcome fear. Who is this God? This mighty God. The Lord himself told us who he is. Exodus 34 says, And the Lord passed before him, let me start from verse 5. And the Lord 
descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful, gracious, long-suffering, abundant in goodness and truth. Keep mercy for thousands. Forget no. That is who our God is. When we understand this God to be merciful, to be gracious. If you look at the book of Job chapter 22, verses 21 and 22. He said, Quit yourself with him and be at peace. Then good will come to you. Acquaint yourself. Know him. Let him know you. You know, when people say, I know God, what I say at times is that, does God know you? If you say, I know God, does God know you? Then the next thing is the assurance of the presence of God. When you are sure that God, the, the psalmist said, though I walk in the shadow of the, in the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil because your presence is with me. Psalm 46 that we all know so well. The Lord is our refuge, a very present help in time of trouble. Therefore, we will not fear because God is a very present, very present help. And the last thing that will help us to overcome fear is just as we know we should cry out, God, even as the disciples did, Lord, increase our faith. Let our faith increase. So, whatever be the impacts of COVID-19 or whatever is going on around, whatever be the personal problem that we may be going through, let us have this in mind that we have a God who is gracious. We have a God who is merciful. We have a God who has all the power. We have a God who determines all things. We have a God who controls everything. This God that has made us to be his own. Anytime I remember God, my heart rejoices. Because he's the owner of the universe. The father that I have controls all things. Ah, I'm so blessed. So whatever, we can see all oh, the earth impact of COVID-19. The economic impact. Somebody said, hey, even before COVID-19, there was a law, there was unemployment. Hey, now with COVID-19 all over the world, what? Fear not. Fear not. Because whatever be the earth effect, the economic effect, the physical effect, God is in control. All that we need to do is what? First Peter 5, 7 says, cast your cares upon the Lord, for he cares for you. I was talking to somebody one day. I said, what God does not give me, I don't take who? I don't take. And the person started looking. He said, what, what do you mean by that? I said, ah. Have you forgotten that in 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7? The Bible says, God has not given us the spirit of fear. Why do you want to take what God has not given you? Why do you want to take that? So, I challenge every child of God that whatever God has not given you, don't take. God has not given me the spirit of fear. I'm not going to take. He has given me the spirit of love, sound mind, and of power. Now, all this to the children of God. Fear not. Fear not. Because it is high. The Lord Jesus Christ, the Redeemer, fear not. But as I said, the title we are considering today is Fear Not, But Fear God. So, if you are not a child of God, you have every cause to fear. You have every reason to be frightened, to be dreaded. If you don't have Jesus Christ in your life, you should be afraid. Why? You know, when I read that book by Jonathan Edwards, Sinners in the Hand of an Angry God, why will you not be afraid? The Bible says, God is angry with the wicked every day. Every day. God is angry with the wicked. Seen us in the hand of an angry God. Are you not going to be afraid of the fierceness of his anger? The torment of hell. Are you not going to be afraid of the judgments? So, sinners have every 
reason to fear. For children of God, you know, it's, I said there are three meanings to so that word translated fear. That word jirat. The second one, the honor, the reverence that you give to a master. That is fear God. Fear God. That is the second part. Say fear God. Why will you not fear God? Even as children of God, we fear God. This holy and gracious God, we must fear him. We must fear God. What is the fear of God? The fear of God is that continual awareness. That this holy God, this great God is watching. He's evaluating everything I say. Everything I do and every thought of my heart. Somebody defined the fear of God as entrusting your life. That's another one. It's like entrusting your life unto him and be the embodiment of all his, all the values and all his purposes. What are the things that matter to God? Those are the things that should matter to us. The continual awareness of the presence of God. We should fear God. Romans, Proverbs 8.13. Proverbs 8.13. Say the fear of God. What is the fear of God? If you look at that, it said the fear of God is to do what? Is to hate evil. Hate evil. That is the fear of God. Pride, arrogance, and any evil way. That is the fear of God. The fear of God is to hate anything evil. The fear of God is to hate sin. The kind of hatred that God has for sin. That is the kind of hatred that we, the children of God, should have for sin. That is the kind of fear we are supposed to have. We read in the book of Luke, say, don't fear that person. That all that that person can do is just to kill the body. What is causing many of the servants of God not to be able to speak the truth? Because of the fear of men. But the Bible says, fear God. If you look at the life of Joseph in the house of Potiphar, we can see the demonstration of fear of God. That evil woman. The Bible says, the adulteress. We always do what? We always hunt for the precious life. Proverbs 6, 26. And that's exactly what was going to happen to Joseph. The adulteress was hunting his life. Remember that you have a destiny to protect. Either a woman or a man. Oh, youth, remember Joseph. Some will say, oh, the person I'm engaged to said we should be meeting. We should be having fun. Fear God. It is important. Look at the life of, 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 of Joseph. The pressure was much, truly, but he did not succumb to that pressure. He feared the Lord. What was the response of Joseph? Just like Job. Job said, I made covenant with my eyes. Job 31 verse 1. Make covenant with your Lord never to defy yourself in any way. And one statement that Joseph made, he said, how can I do this wickedness and sin against God? How can I? How can I? Have we all considered, how can I do this? How can I in my place of work? How can I do this? How can I join the unbelievers to do this evil? How can I do this when I am redeemed? How can I follow others to do this evil? Think about it. What are those things that you can say? How can I, just like Joseph, how can I, this God, how can I sin against God? 
after this much that I've received from him, after this much grace, after this much grace, how can I sin against him again? How can I? That is one phrase I want you to go with. That is one phrase I will go with as well. How can I? When you, I, in a different arms, daddies, mommies, fear God. Because there are blessings for the fear of, for those people that fear the Lord. Teach the children to fear the Lord. Teach everyone. No, God was so proud of of Abraham. He said, I know Abraham. I know he will command his household. How many fathers have time to sit down with the household and command them that this is the way of the Lord. Walk ye in it. Continue it. Continue in it. You, at no at times, we need to insist. Prayerfully insist that our children fear the Lord. Praise the if you look at Psalm, Psalm 112. Okay, let's read Psalm 128 first. I want us to read it. Psalm 128. The blessing of those that fear the Lord. It says, Blessed is everyone that feareth the Lord. That walketh in his ways, for thou shalt eat the labor of thy hands. Happy shall thou be, and it shall be well with thee. Thy wife shall be as a fruitful vine by the sight of thy house. Thy children, like olive plants, round about thy table. Behold, thus that thou shalt the man be blessed that feareth the Lord. If you want to be blessed, please fear God. Proverbs chapter 31, verses 30 and 31. Say, fear is deceitful. Beauty is vain. But a woman that fears the Lord, she shall be praised. He said, give her of the fruit of her labor. When somebody fears the Lord, we know the blessings that will follow. We can also go and read Psalm 112. Praise the Lord. So fear the Lord. All oh, youth in the house, Solomon wrote to you. Remember the Lord. Remember him in the days of your youth. When he was concluding, Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verses 13 and 14. Say, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of of man for God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing whether it be good or whether it be evil the fear of God in the church you know at times when people are coming to church it's as if they are going into a place of entertainment are we not coming to worship the ancient of days are we not coming to worship God who is awesome. Please let us learn as God, by God's grace, we are all praying that very soon the doors of churches will be opened. And will come. When we come in the presence of the Lord, we must reverence Him, we must fear Him. We must fear Him. The Bible says, Put your fear in nations. Put your fear in nations. Let me read. That is Psalm. Um, yeah. Psalm 9 says, Put them in fear, O Lord, that the nations may know themselves to be but men. Put them in fear. We will pray that the Lord will put his fear in the heart of everyone. Praise the Lord. The, praise the mighty Jesus. The leadership of nations. The Bible says, He that must rule over men must be just, ruling in the fear of God. He that must rule over men, and if we refuse to fear God, 
if you refuse to fear God. The children of Israel refused to fear God. God spoke to them. In fact, because they refused to fear God, God planted. God said, look, if you don't, even the shaking of leaves, let me take us 26 verse, 20, verse 36. Say, the shaking of leaves will make you afraid. Fear God. Let's have the consciousness of God. That whatever we are doing, whatever we are saying, our thoughts, all, everything, God is watching, God is evaluating, fear God. For one thing that baffled me one day was when I read that even the thief crucified with Jesus, he was telling the other person, saying, won't you fear God? And because he said that, he had the last chance. And he made, he, you know, for him to, exact, to, to manifest the fear of God at that last, last, last minute. Fear God. Fear not, but fear God. Don't be afraid of any of this. As a child of God, but fear God. All ye sinners, fear God. Children of God, fear him, honor him, Obey his commandments and it shall be well with us in the name of Jesus. If thou, Deuteronomy 28, 58 and 66, if thou will not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name. Fear this glorious and fearful name. The Lord thy God. Verse 66 says, and thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. That is if you don't fear God. If you don't fear God, it says, our life shall hang in doubt. That is not what we want. We don't want our life to hang in doubt. And thou shalt fear day and night. Which one would I rather prefer? And shall have none assurance of life. No assurance of life. If we don't fear God, may the Lord Almighty help us in the name of Jesus. Fear not. No matter what it is, fear not. Praise the Lord. But cast your cares upon the Lord. He cares for you. Five sparrows. Sword for a father. But God that determines all things, that controls all things, none of them. We fall to the ground without his knowledge. Let's have this confidence in our God. Our God is big. Praise the Lord. Can we begin to pray? Can we begin to pray? We have listened to the word of God. Many causes of fear. Fear of sicknesses. Fear of death. Which Apostle Paul said. He said because of fear of death. Some have throughout their lifetime kept themselves under bondage. I want us to pray. Whatever be the anxiety, whatever be the fear, whatever be the cause of that fear, Father, I bring everything to the feet of the cross. Oh, Father, increase my faith. Increase my faith. What you have not given me, I am not going to have it. The Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear. I am not going to have it. But the spirit of love, because perfect love casts out fear. The Bible says what can separate us from the love of Christ? That love, that everlasting love. Brethren, I want us to pray. Whatever be the cause of that fear, Father, today help me. Help me. Save me from the spirit of fear. Deliver me from fear. The name of Jesus. I want us to now commit unto the hands of God whatever it is. As we know that today, the first Sunday in the month of June, is the healing, the prayer and fasting and healing service. Let us pray. Let's call upon the name of the Lord. Father, touch me. Touch me and make me whole. Touch my bodies, 
Touch, touch my body, touch my spirit, touch my soul. Make me whole in the name of Jesus. I want us to pray. Father, touch me. Make me whole. Heal me. You have the power. Heal me. And I want us to pray now for sinners. Sinners in the hands of an angry God. The Bible says, knowing the terror of God will persuade men. I want us to pray. Father, because this will come from you. The grace to be saved comes from you. The Bible said the grace of God that bringeth salvation that appeared unto all men. Let us pray, oh God, release your grace upon men so that they will be delivered from sins. Let us pray that, Father, let there be revival. Let there be revival. Let there be revival. Let there be repentance, true repentance in the name of Jesus. I want us to pray concerning what is going on in the world at this time. We know that the major problem was COVID-19 in the U.S., in European countries, but that has shifted now. If you watch the news, that has shifted because of racism. We know what happened a few days if America no longer records anything called COVID-19, everybody is on the streets. They have mixed together. They are protesting. Let us pray. Oh God, Father, we beseech you, have mercy upon the nations of the world. From one thing to the other, Father, please have mercy upon the nations of the world. It is only by your mercy. You are merciful and gracious. Have mercy, oh God. I want us to pray for the leadership of several nations. The leaders, let us pray. Put your fear in their hearts. God, let them, let them know that they are just men. You know, when this issue of COVID-19 started, I told somebody, I said, where is the what's power now? It is not about what's power. It is about God's power. Let us pray. Let these men realize that they are just men. Father, bring it to their consciousness in the name of Jesus. Let's pray for the church of God. The Bible says it's coming for a glorious church. It's coming for a glorious church. A church without wrinkle. A church without blemish. Let us pray. Father, prepare us for your coming in the name of Jesus. Help us, oh God, to be conscious to, 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 to be conscious of your presence so that we don't just do what we like. We don't say what we like. We don't think what we like. Father, visit your children and take away every form of fear. Let the living water over my soul let thy Holy Spirit come and take control of every situation that has troubled my heart. All my cares and bodies unto you I roll. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. If you are here and you have not accepted Jesus, you cannot have peace. You should be afraid of the day of judgment. Bow your head and invite the Lord Jesus into your life. If you are one of His, and you are still so afraid, you have phobia for different things. Cockroaches will make somebody, some people to run let us get up. Pray against the spirit of fear. Father, we say thank you to you. Almighty God, we worship and we honor your holy name for visiting us. Father, we thank you for your word that you have sent out to us. Father, we pray that this word will be life in the name of Jesus. It will be spirit. We will continue in your fear, but we will not be afraid. 
because we will trust in you, because we will look unto you, because we will set our minds on you, because we continue to cry unto you. Blessed be your name, O God, for in Jesus' mighty name we prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. What a mighty God we serve. His name be praised. Take note of the following announcements. Our Tuesday uh, prayer and uh, Bible study meeting continues. Longing time as usual, 545. Mommies and daddies, children, please be reminded of your Thursday Bible study meeting, 6 p.m., Prompt. There are still some uh, food items uh, in the welfare unit. If you know anyone that is in need, please let's get in touch for those people to collect. Let us continue to encourage ourselves through phone calls, testing. Be- let us pray for one another. We need one another, even in times like this. Also remember to continue to pray for uh, our dear sister, the Oluwashalas, the wedding that will be coming up next week. Continue to uphold them in prayers. We shall be taking our closing hymn titled, Stand Up, Stand Up for Jesus. Thereafter, our daddy, we, daddy Doku will come up for the benediction. Remain blessed.
have just sung says, stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the cross. Lift high his royal banner, it must not suffer loss. From victory unto victory, his army he shall lead till the foe is vanquished and Christ is Lord indeed. Shall we pray? Indeed, our Father, glorious God, the wonderful God, the everlasting greatness, the one who is and who forever shall be, we thank you for how hitherto you have helped us. Your word has come forth with power. Telling us not to fear. Say, fear not. For I am with you. You said you will help us. You say you will sustain us with your right hand of righteousness. Therefore, we will not fear. But we will fear only you. Thank you for this strong word that has come at this time when the whole world is locked up in fear. We are not looking at what we see. We are not looking at what you hear, but we look at the word that is written. Say, fear not, for I will be with you. Thank you for your assurance. Thank you for your goodness. All those you promised to, to help them and not to fear, Father, you did so. And that's why we have confidence that you are also going to help us at this time as you have called upon your name. May thy name be glorified in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, Father, that your daughter who has brought the word, virtue has come out of her. We pray that you will renew her strength. You will refresh her anew. And you focus, Father, her vision and her understanding in the mysteries of the Most High God. We pray for the blessings of her home, the blessings of her family, the blessings of her career. And all those who have contributed to bring this service to come to pass, your blessing will not depart from us in the mighty name of Jesus. As it has been announced today, it's a fasting healing service. You are the healer. Men only care. Medications only take care. But you are the one who heals. So Father, we commit everyone unto your hand. That says your word. Your word tells us. You say, why cry thou for thy affliction? Thy sorrow is incurable for the multitude of thy iniquities. Because thy sins were increased, I have done these things unto thee. Therefore, all they that devour thee shall be devoured. And all thy adversaries, every one of them shall go into captivity. And they that spoil thee shall be a spoil. And all that pray upon thee will I give for a prey. He said, for I will restore health unto thee, and I will heal thee of thy wounds, says the Lord, because they call thee an outcast, saying, this is Zion whom no man seeketh after. Father, your word can never be broken. And as you have said, Lord, you said you will restore health. Let your help be restored to all those who are in pain in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, restore our fortunes. Restore our captivity. Restore, Father, our fright. Restore, Father, our backwardness. Father, restore us back unto yourself. In the mighty name of Jesus. Your word says, all those who devour us, you will give for a devour. You give them to be devoured. Let it be so, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. As even we go through this lockdown situation, you are the light of the world. And the Bible says, the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. 
let your light shine forth upon this city, upon this state, and upon this nation, and upon the whole world in the mighty name of Jesus. Everywhere is in turmoil, but wherever you are, there is order. Where there is confusion, your word goes forth and says, let there be light. And there was light. I say, everywhere there is darkness, let your light shine in the mighty name of Jesus. As we go forth into this week, you will be with us. You will lead us in the right way. As we go forth in this week, cause our ears to hear a word behind us that this is a way. Pass in it when we go left or we go right. Blessed be thy name, Lord. Thank you for what you have done, for what you're doing, for what you will do. So, Father, unto you be glory, unto you be power, unto you be majesty, unto you be adoration, worship, thanksgiving, gratitude be unto you forever and ever. Thank you, our Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Shall we share the grace together? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And as we normally do, face somebody and prophesy to the life of the person. Face somebody and say, surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your lives. And you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. And all of us shall say, Amen. One more time. Praise ye the Lord. God bless you. God bless you.